everybody, welcome to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> yes, it's been 15 years since we've had the classic version of Millionaire in Australia, so we thought we'd bring it back, and why not? Millionaire has been the most successful quiz show in the history of world television. I don't say that lightly. In the history of world television, not only that, but the spin-off movie Slumdog Millionaire won the Academy Award for Best Movie. How about that? It's been an absolutely true phenomenon in every single way possible. Tonight, we're joined by six of our brave and selfless frontline workers, people who have been heroic in 2020. Thank you for everything you've done. Whether it's been fighting bushfires, rescuing those affected by not only nature, but by the biggest story in the world this last 12 months, COVID-19. Those who continue to go above and beyond for Australia, that's these people. And I can't think of anyone better to have the opportunity tonight than you six to win $1 million. Let's do it right now. So let's get started. Let's meet our contestants tonight, and they are right here. This man is retired policeman and volunteer Mark Tregellis, frontline COVID hospital nurse Laura Keeley, wildlife rescuer Manfred Sabinskis, charity founder Donna Stolzenberg, general practitioner Dr Kirby White, and food charity worker Alex Decker. Welcome, everyone. All right. Now let's put all the charitable nature away and go for the money, everybody, OK? Let's have a bit of fun and get stuck into it. Right, first you have a crack at a million dollars. We play fastest finger first, but we're going to play the original way. The fastest contestant to enter their answers in the correct order will be the first to get into the chair to play for the million dollars. So you have to give me four answers to just one question. Make sure you press OK when you get to your keypads, everybody. Get stuck into it there and make sure you put that in as your final answer. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to go? Yes. Yes. Come on. Here we go. Here comes the question to get to the hot seat to play for $1 million. Good luck, everybody. Order these Australian capital cities from easternmost to westernmost. A, Adelaide. B, Darwin. C, Hobart. D, Sydney. Australian capital cities from easternmost to westernmost. Adelaide, Darwin, Hobart, Sydney, and quick, 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 quick. Time's up. The person who is the fastest to get the answers in the right order will play for $1 million. And the answer is we need Sydney, then Hobart, then Adelaide, and then Darwin. Sydney, Hobart, Adelaide, Darwin. These people got it right. Only one. Manfred was the fastest. Got him, Manfred. Well played, buddy. Congratulations. Come on, let's go. Welcome aboard. Manfred Zabinskis is a wildlife rescuer who operates Five Freedoms Animal Rescue. He has saved thousands of animals, providing shelter and support in times of distress and bushfires. He was recognised for his service to animal welfare with a medal of the Order of Australia. Congratulations, Manfred, on behalf of everybody for all the work you've done. Thank you. Now, tell me, how many animals do we think we lost over the period there with the bushfires in the last 12 months? Well, the estimates are that we've lost probably around 3 billion animals. Billion. 3 billion. Yeah, it's, uh, it was astronomical. When you look at these things, what's the thing that really hits you in the heart? Well, the thing that hits me are the animals that, that don't perish quickly. Like, you know, it's, it's devastating, obviously, and, and many animals suffered greatly. It's the ones, the larger animals, that get burnt and don't die instantly, and they suffer for days, weeks, even months before they eventually pass away, and that's why we need to be out that's there. That's why we need to be out there. And, Madford, you're doing it, mate. Fantastic stuff. What are you going to do if you win the million dollars? I'm going to build a big fire bunker so I can stick all my animals in it. Yeah, right, OK. <laughs> what about you? Something else? Oh, we might go in there as well once we've got <laughs> okay. all the animals safe and sound. You're a a modern-day Noah. <laughs> Just going to fill up the bunker, eh? Yeah, might as well. It's a change from the lounge room. Good on you, mate. All right, well, I hope you and your magpie shirt does well tonight. Okay. Manfred, we want you to win the money. Here it is. Fifteen questions. The safe levels are back. One thousand and thirty-two thousand, all the way up to one million dollars. Three lifelines are there. You can ask the host, switch the question out, and 50-50, which will give you a 50-50 answer to uh, pick from. No time limit. Take your time, have a good look, work out what's there. Sometimes it's even better to work out what's not right. 
Leave any time with your current winnings. That's key. If you get a question you don't like, you can walk out the door. No questions asked. I'll sign the cheque and give it to you. Are you ready to play, Manfred? I'm ready, Eddie. Manfred Zabinskis, let's play. <laughs> All right, Manfred, let's go. First question is for $100. It's great to have you back, buddy. An expression meaning to be in good health is as fit as a what? A cello. B, fiddle. C, bagpipe. D, euphonium. Oh, I think we'll lock in B, thanks, Eddie. As fit as a fiddle is yeah. in and correct for $100. We're well, away. $200. Which of these words describes something that is particularly compelling? A. Riveting. B. Nailing. C. Bolting. D. Bracketing. Uh, lock in A, thanks, Eddie. Lock in something that is riveting, correct, for $200. From the idea that the attention is held as tightly on something as a rivet holds together pieces of metal. $300. What is the name for the lookout point on the tallest mast of a sailing ship? A. Hawks Erie. B. Eagles Branch. C. Crow's Nest. D. Seagulls Rock. Uh, lock in C for Crow's Nest. Thank Crow's you. Nest, but uh, the suburb in Sydney as well. Correct. For three hundred dollars. <laughs> John Howard used to have his holidays in Crow's Nest, didn't he, all the time? Structure is thought to have been named for its resemblance to a nest in a tree, as you would think. $500. Which of these is the correct plural spelling of scarf? A. Scarves. B. Scarves. C. Scarves. D. Scarves. I will go for B. Thanks. Eddie, lock in B. Lock in B with a V. Correct for $500. Well played. Good stuff. All right, Manfred. Next one's for 1000 you get that right, you're taking home a minimum $1,000. Here it comes. On an analogue clock, the hour and minute hands are at a 90 degree angle at what time? A, 9 o'clock. B, 9.15. C, 9.30. D, 9.45. Oh, You've got to watch on. I'd have a look at it if I was you. <laughs> I could have looked, couldn't I? Um... Ninety degrees, so definitely not nine o'clock. So nine fifteen. They're at ninety degrees. Nine thirty, definitely not. That's one eighty. So um, it would be uh, lock in B, please, Eddie, at nine fifteen. Should have looked at my watch, shouldn't I? Yeah. So nine, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock is the end. Oh, Manfred. Oh. Mate. Jumped at it too fast. Oh, I'm sorry, Manfred. That's it. Okay. Go on, mate. Thanks, Thank Manfred. You. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Five players ready to go. Come on, everybody. Heads down. Let's play fastest finger first. I want to give away some money. Let's do it right now. Heads down. Here comes the question. List these units of imperial measurement from shortest to longest. A furlong, B yard, C foot, D chain. Furlong, yard, foot, chain. We need it from shortest to longest in the old imperial measurements. Quickly. Hit OK. And time is up. The person who is the fastest to get the answer in the right order will play for $1 million. And the answer is foot. Then a yard, then a chain, and then a furlong. So foot, yard, chain, furlong. These people got it right. Laura was the fastest. Good on you, Laura, in 7.87 seconds. Let's go. Come on. Hello, Laura. Welcome Hi. to the show. Thank you. Laura Keeley is a specialist nurse at the Royal Melbourne Hospital where she worked through two waves of coronavirus in 2020, nursing COVID patients and, tragically, holding their hands during their final moments at times. After struggling through the horrors of the virus herself, she's now returned to the front line to continue helping others. Yeah. Tell me, Laura, what was it like last year, 2020, in January, 
because you actually looked after the first patient that came in, is that right? Yeah, yeah, we had the first patient come in from Wuhan. It was Australia Day weekend last year. Um, it was a bit of a novelty, I think, at the start. It was, you know, we look after many different people with communicable diseases and um, all sorts of kind of travel medicine. And then when they came, um, it was a bit like, oh, I looked after the first coronavirus patient. Whereas now I can't even count how many. You've actually sat with people who've died in front of you while you've held their hands. How devastating a disease is this COVID-19 when it hits people and gets them to that level? When you see these people take their last breaths and their only family members are through an iPad smaller than their screen in front and you can see the whole family behind them and you're the only one standing in the corner of the room, it's um, yeah, nothing you want anyone to go through. Laura, take a deep breath, relax, <laughs> we're going to take a break. When we come okay. back, Laura Keeley is going to play for $1 million. She wants to be a millionaire. Welcome back to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Laura Keeley is ready to go on question one for $100. Good luck, Laura. Thank 15 you. questions coming your way, as we said. The first safe level is $1,000, then $32,000. You get to those, you take that money, and that just goes home with you, regardless of what happens after that. All the way up to a million dollars. Three lifelines. Ask the host, switch 50 50. Manfred didn't use his lifelines, should have. Take your time, there's no rush, okay? And if you've got a watch on, have a look at it. <laughs> Leave any time with your current winnings as well. You ready to go? Yes. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> Laura, good luck. This is for $100. Launched in 2012 by game developer King is the mobile app Candy What Saga. A, Crush. B, Bash. C, Flatten. D, Bar. I'm obsessed with this game. Uh, lock in A. You're obsessed by it, eh? <laughs> yes. Candy Crush Saga, correct for $100. Thank you. First released online, then as a Facebook game, the uh, iOS and Android versions have been downloaded hundreds of millions of times, including by Laura. $200. <laughs> a colloquial term meaning to have a tantrum is Chuck A. What? A. Wiggly. B. Jiggly. C. Wobbly. D, jittery. Uh, lock in C. Chuck a wobbly. wobbly. Locked in, correct, for $200. 300 The primary logo of Australia Post is white and which other colour? A, green. B, red. C, yellow. D, purple. Uh, lock in B, red. Red. Correct, $300. Features a red P for post in a white circle and white lettering on a red background. $300 in your pocket, let's play for $500. A traditional piece of exercise equipment is a what ball? A, medicine. B, engineering. C, history. D, law. Uh, lock in A, medicine. A nurse want to get this one right, a medicine ball? <laughs> Correct, for $500, well played. <laughs> this is for the first safe level. Manfred fell over here. Let's get to a thousand so you've got at least a grand to go home with okay. you, okay? Laura, for a thousand dollars, which of these animals is a type of bovine? A goat, B bear, C wolf, D cow. Bovine. Oh, I think it sounds like a wolf. First I thought a bird, but um Maybe I'll take a lifeline. Lifeline, okay. All right, okay, yeah. let's have a look at this. You can ask me, get rid of this question, or have a 50 50 and have a 50 50 chance. Um, can I ask you? All right, let's have a chat about it, okay? okay. I think it's cow. Okay. okay. That's my final answer. Oh, all right. Uh, I will lock in a cow. Lock in a cow? Oh, please do. <laughs> yes, it's correct for a thousand dollars. There you go. Bovine intervention. <laughs> Laura, let's go for two thousand dollars. Okay. Here we go. 
Now we're away. You've got a thousand to take up. Located mm. off the west coast of Scotland, the Inner Hebrides Island Group includes the Isle of what? A. C. B. Land. C. Sky. D. Beach. Mm. My answer in my head was going to be the Isle of Man. So I don't know. Uh, that's no, there's not another any one. of those. Isle of Sea, Isle of Land, Isle of Sky, Isle of Beach. Mm. You've got two other lifelines, don't forget. Yeah. Um. Okay, you can't lose any money here, you can only make it. I think I'll switch it out. Switch it out. Okay, yeah. let's get rid of this yeah. question. Switch this one out. Before we do, what would you have gone for? Land. Land would have seen you out the door. It's the Isle of Skye. Oh. Oh. Get rid of it. New okay, question. <laughs> Switch. Out it goes. New question for $2,000. Which of these is a cotton fabric identified by its distinctive parallel ridges? A. Satin. B. Tulle. C. Corduroy. D. Pleather. That's not pleather. I think tulle is like a grid-like... Distinctive Straight. parallel ridges. Oh, um, corduroy's got ridges in it. Uh, what sort of ridges do they have? Straight lines, parallel lines. Look and see. It's in. <laughs> it's correct for two thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Laura stands down deaf on a daily basis, but you're going beautifully. Come on, here we go for four thousand dollars. Okay. Which of these Mexican foods is traditionally cooked inside a corn husk? A. Fajita. B. Tamale. C. Quesadilla. D. Enchilada. Mm. Quesadilla is in like a wrap, and so is enchilada. I've had fajitas. It's tamale. Because I. Lock in B, tamale. Lock in tamale? Correct for $4,000. Oh. You're away. Oh. <laughs> Tamales are filled with pockets of dough wrapped and steamed in corn husks, which are then removed before eating. Well, let's go to $8,000 to the halfway mark. Okay. Liza Minnelli had a recurring role in which of these TV comedies? A. Parks and Recreation. B. The Good Place. C. 30 Rock. D. Arrested Development. I've only seen one of these. Um, it's not The Good Place. Is it? Um, Which one did you see? Um, the Good Place. Yeah. yeah. So I know it's... I hope it's not that. Okay. I'm pretty sure I know who Liza Minnelli is. Um... Okay, I think I think I'm going to have to use my last lifeline. Okay. I don't want to take a step. Yeah. Okay, let's use another lifeline. Okay. Let's take the 50-50. Get rid of two incorrect answers. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Was so lucky. Um, I'll be really upset if this is not it, but I will lock in D. Arrested development. Arrested development is your answer. Locked in and correct for eight thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Well done. Congratulations. Thank you are $8,000. Don't forget, you can take that money. If the next question comes up and you don't like it, you can walk out the door with $8,000. Okay. Next one for $16,000, <laughs> then the next safe level of thirty-two. But you're playing beautifully, Laura. Sixteen grand. Okay. Champion tennis player Dominic Thiem was born in which country? A. Austria. B. Canada. C. Netherlands. D. Greece. Tennis, but I don't know who that is. Dominic sounds like a Greek name. Not Austrian. Champion tennis player Dominic Team. Uh, team. I feel it's. Oh, I'd just be taking a stab, and I feel like that's a big risk. If you get this right, you win sixteen thousand dollars. If you get it wrong, you lose seven thousand. Oh. 
I feel I'd be just taking a stab and eight, eight is my favourite number, I think I'm... Eight's your favourite number? Yeah. <laughs> Lucky number. Lucky number. A Chinese number for wealth. Yeah. Eight thousand dollars. What do you want to do? Yeah, I better not gamble up. I think I'll take that. You'll take the eight thousand dollars. Yeah. Congratulations, Thank Laurie. You've won eight thousand dollars cash. Well played. <laughs> Good job. All right, go and have a go. What would you have gone for? I would have said Greece. You would have said Greece, and I would have said. You've just lost $7,000. Oh, oh, thank God. Dominic oh, Team Austria. <laughs> Austrian. Now, don't remember his first name. It's the last <laughs> name you're looking at. Anyway, congratulations, Laura. Laura has just won $8,000. Four contestants ready to go for a million dollars when we return on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Good on you, Laura. Go on thank up. you. to the classic version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. We've got our frontline workers with us today and it is going to be uh, just fantastic to see if somebody else can win some big money. $8,000 just went out the door. Let's see if we can go all the way to $1 million. You ready, everyone? Fastest finger first. Here it comes. Order these celebrities from youngest to oldest. A, Sandra Bullock. B, Nicki Minaj. C, Drew Barrymore. D, Oprah Winfrey. Celebrities youngest to oldest. Sandra Bullock, Nicki Minaj, Drew Barrymore, Oprah Winfrey. Youngest to oldest, time's up. The person who is the fastest to get the answers in the right order will play for a million dollars. And the answer is... Nicki Minaj is the youngest, then Drew Barrymore, then Sandra Bullock, and then Oprah Winfrey. So Nicki Minaj, Drew Barrymore, Sandra Bullock, Oprah Winfrey. These people got it right. And Alex was the fastest. Go on, Alex. Let's go. <laughs> Alex Decker was a university student when the pandemic hit. And that began a life for him preparing meals for his sister and her co-workers on the front line. It has grown into a charity that now feeds thousands of vulnerable individuals each week. And it's called Alex Makes Meals. Congratulations, mate. Thank you, Eddie. It's been great. a long year. Now, tell me about this. Uh, tell me, first of all, about your sister, because that's where it's all started. Yes. It? Well, my sister was a doctor at the Monash Medical Center yep. during the first wave on the emergency ward, which is one of the worst places to be during a COVID outbreak. Yeah. Um, so she was pulling, you know, 13-hour shifts. She wasn't sleeping, she wasn't eating. And so I called her up and said, don't worry, I've got you, I'll make you a lasagna. And then as I was making the lasagna, I realised I could make a lot more lasagna, like a lot more. Um, so I put out a post on Facebook, expected maybe five or ten people to respond saying, yeah, look, I'm struggling now too. Over 400 responded by that evening. Gee. Yeah. How did you go from one lasagna into what you're doing now? I started making some phone calls to complete strangers, um, you know, because I figured restaurants are closing right now, so yep. they probably have some staff that are on JobKeeper, they probably have some kitchens. And after a day, we had a commercial kitchen and we had a lot of donated produce, as yeah. well as some chefs to work with us. And so that first week, we shipped out 800 meals, and every week since, we've shipped out over 1,000. That's unbelievable. Now you've got 50 charities working alongside you, or you alongside them, yep. helping provide the meals. And we've seen so many of this going right around Australia. It's been wonderful. But you're the man who's in the chair tonight, Alex, and we congratulate you and everyone who walks in your shoes as well. To all the people out there, it's great stuff. Now, if you uh, go well tonight, you make some big money, yeah. what are you going to do? Oh, that's a lot of meals. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it just goes straight to making meals, Eddie. Good on you, Alex. Congratulations. Alex Decker, 20 years of age, the founder of Alex Makes Meals. Let's have a crack at a million dollars. You need to give me 15 correct answers. The safe levels are at $1,000 and $32,000, all the way up to that magic million. Three lifelines. You can ask the host. You can switch it out, and you can have a 50-50, get a 50-50 chance of getting it right. No time limit. Take your time. Leave any time, as we just saw with Laura. She walked out the door with $8,000. Are you ready to play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Hell yeah. Let's play. Go. <laughs> well done, Alex. In on the money Go. for 100 bucks. A popular guessing game starts with one player announcing, I spy with my little what? A, fly. B, pie. C, cry. D, I. 
I'm going to lock in D. Thanks, Eddie. Lock in D. I spy with my little eye something beginning with $100. There you go. Drop <laughs> one. You used to do that on the road trips with your parents and oh, your sister. Long while ago, but Drive yeah. Drive the man, exactly. <laughs> $200. Which of these terms most closely describes a type of cloud suspended near or touching the ground? A. Sleet. B. Fog. C. Rainbow. D. Blizzard. I'm going to lock in B. Thanks, Eddie. Fog's in. Fog's right. $200. Yeah. Usually formed in humid conditions due to the high amount of water in the air. 300 bucks. Which of these is a common colloquialism meaning fine or pleasant? A. a lemony. B. Melony. C. Peachy. D. Limey. I'm going to lock and see. Everything's peachy. Locked in. Correct. $300. <laughs> Everything's just peachy. 12 to go for a million dollars for 500 The Melbourne Cup is, is traditionally held on the first what in November? A. Monday. B. Tuesday. C. Thursday. D. Saturday. All right, I'm going to show my age with this one. I think I know this one because of the two-day public holiday from school <laughs> that we used to have. Yeah. So I'm going to say Tuesday, locking in B. Lock in B Tuesday, you wag Monday. Yep. And if you're good enough, you can get out to Oaks Day on the Thursday as well. Tuesday is correct. The first Tuesday in November, they run the Melbourne Cup. Since 1875 and, of course, last year for the first time ever without a crowd. $500. A popular jazz song recorded by Glenn Miller in 1939 was the hit In The What? A. Mood. B. Summertime. C. Navy. D. Dark. Ooh. For a thousand bucks, first safe level. Now, how am I not meant to know this one? All right. I think it's between A and B. But I'm going to have to go 50-50. Use a lifeline if I could add it. Right, OK, you've got three lifelines. You can yeah. ask me. You can have a 50-50, or you can get rid of it all together. You can switch it out. Now, have a think about what you want to do here. See, I think it's between mood and summertime, meaning right. if I get a 50-50, which excludes crack, one of them. Say? I'd say probably summertime. Right. Or mood. <laughs> See the problem? <laughs> um, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go 50-50. 50-50? Yep, and let's hope right. that one reveals the answer. OK, well, OK. Let's get rid of two incorrect answers. Cool. Now, see, in the Navy, sounds kind of silly to me, but at the same time, it was the 40s, so... 1939. Yeah, 40. Ish. Um, all right. <laughs> no, it's 39. <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, what do you reckon? Glenn Miller, in the mood or in the Navy? I'm going to say, in the mood, lock it in. Hey. In the mood is correct for a thousand dollars. Oh, let's get the jeans out of me. Thousand dollars is all yours. What do you know of the grand? That's uh, that's two thousand people we've just fed. Fantastic. Yeah. Good on you. Makes me pretty happy. You, you want to buy a food van, don't you? Yeah, we're we're actually in the process of purchasing our first food van. Yep. So that we can both reach more vulnerable communities um, by directly giving them hot meals and also use it to generate funding for our long-term stability. Good stuff, Alex. Next question is for $2,000. You've got a grand in your pocket. We'll take a break and come back and have a crack at a million dollars right after this. <laughs> Alex Decker is a frontline worker helping frontline workers. His yes. sister, a doctor. What's your sister's name, by the way? My sister's name's Petra. And uh, what sort of medicine is she doing? Uh, she's a general registrar at um, the emergency clinic. Okay, so she was getting the people coming with COVID. Oh, yeah, she was getting the emergency cases that yeah. they thought it could be. Alex decided he was going to feed his sister, and that went from one meal a week to now. 140,000 meals in total and 4,000 a week. Wow, and wants to buy his food van and keep going in this philanthropic uh, world that he's working in right now. Good on you, Alex. More strength to the arm. You've got a grand. That's yours. That's going home with you. Let's make it 2,000. Two lifelines. Let's go. Let's go. If a $95 item is sold at 10% off, what is the final price? A, $85. B, $85.50. 
C $86, D $86.50. This makes me happy. All right. Maths was my thing. I'm going to say, locking in B, $85.50. OK, final answer. Yep. It's in. It's correct for $2,000. There you go. $4,000. Japanese futamaki is best described as a type of which of these? A. Soup. B. Custard. C. Chicken skewers. D. Sushi. Oh, no. All right. See, the problem is none of these were made in the kitchen. So that, uh, that kind of limits my knowledge here. Mm. And I'm I'm loath to use another lifeline this early, but I may have to. Survival is the name of the game. It Japanese is. futamaki. How much do we know about food, Eddie? I like it. <laughs> I'm going to have to go for a lifeline. Switch. All right, before we get rid of it, what would you have gone for? Look, my instincts, I have a sushi or chicken skewers, I'd probably go sushi first. Sushi's correct. God damn. Out. <laughs> New question for $4,000. The term tetrapod describes any animal with what? A, two horns. B, four feet. C, canine teeth. D, six eyes. Well, pod is leg, right? Or something to that effect in Latin. Um... I'm gonna go, I'm gonna lock in B for four feet. Lock it in? Yep. Correct, $4,000. Well done. Yeah, quite many feet. Yeah. Word derives from the Latin and the Greek words for four footed tetrapod. $8,000. Let's get to the halfway mark. The town of Handorf in South Australia is the country's oldest surviving what settlement? A. German. B. Chinese. C, Italian, D, Dutch. Oh. All right, so the name immediately seems Germanic Dutch region, right? I'm not sure Dorf is a suffix in, in Dutch. I should know this, my dad literally is Dutch, so. What's your first instinct? My first instinct's German. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lock in A. Lock in, eh? Yep. Handorf in South Australia is the oldest surviving settlement for the German people of South Australia. Oh. Well played. Thank you. All right. Settled by German speaking migrants in 1839. Town is a popular tourist attraction in the Adelaide Hills. It's absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. And of course, a lot of the winemaking in South Australia goes back to those German migrants coming out to Australia. All right. Next one is for $16,000. Let's go, Let's Alex. Go. What is the full name of the professional US basketball team nicknamed the Sixers? A, Philadelphia 76ers. B, Chicago 46ers. C, New York 66ers. D, Miami 96ers. Oh. Well, I said I was going to rely on you for sports once, because, well... Your Eddie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use the lifeline, Eddie. You want to ask the host? I do want to ask the host. Ask the host. Yep. Okay. A. A. That's what I think, anyway. I, well, I think Eddie. Ben the, Simmons, the Australian, plays for the, the Philadelphia the sport, 76ers. Yeah, the sport commentator probably knows a bit about sport. Yeah. So Chicago I'm going to go. Bulls. I'm going to lock in A. Correct for sixteen thousand dollars. Yes. 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 Now I can relax for a couple of minutes. Yeah. OK. That was pretty tense. Now, $16,000, Alex. Get to 32 and that goes home with you, OK? That's all I want. Let's go. This is the big one for you. For $32,000, first marketed in 1906, what kind of machine is Victrola? A, lawnmower. B, car. C, record player. D, bicycle. Oh, Vic no. Victrola. Victrola. All right. 1906. Yeah. See, that was definitely the time of record players, right? When they were first starting with vinyl. 
I've gone for a lawnmower. I think back then it was way too early for lawnmowers to be mass marketed. It would have still been scythes because it's hard for lawnmowers to be improved upon until they got. Okay, car. I should know when Henry Ford did the car to know whether or not this was plausible. What else happened in 06? German was just starting to industrialize. Germany was just starting to industrialize. But they weren't industrializing about the car. America hadn't yet become a superpower. It was the World's Fair after that where they became um, famous for having new crop wielding. So that, again, cuts out lawnmower. <sighs> if I get this wrong, I'm going to kick myself. But I'm going to lock and see for record player. Record player is correct for 32,000 oh, boy. <laughs> Alex, well played. Okay, that was hey, stressful as hell. Thirty-two thousand dollars. Now, come on, we, we, we could buy the van with that, but something that's, for you. That's food truck money and a nice pair of boots. Good stuff, mate. <laughs> hey, now thirty-two. When we come back, we're going to take a break. The happiest question of them all. <laughs> Free hit at sixty-four thousand. Yep, the sixty-four thousand dollar question is next. <laughs> Twenty-year-old Alex Decker, boy, has this guy got the world in front of him. He was studying... Science and Global Studies. All right, you'll get back to it eventually, I reckon. One day. Good luck with everything you're doing. I want to give you 64000 bucks. Okay? I want to get $64,000. Come on, let's win $64,000. Let's go. Which of these singers performed at the wedding of Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer in 1981? What are you thinking? I got nothing. You got nothing? I got nothing. All right, OK, all right, OK. You got no lifelines. But <laughs> Luciana Pavarotti, B, Kiri de Kanawa, C, Jose Carreras, D, Joan Sutherland. All right. So it's the royal family. Traditional. Wedding, Prince Charles, Lady Diana. Ooh. I'm going to go with Kiri de Kanawa. On nothing because I got nothing. Lock it in? Lock it in. Luciana Pavarotti comes from? Italy. Jose Carreras comes from Spain? Yep. Joan Sutherland comes from? Australia? Yep. Kiri Takanawa comes from New Zealand? Okay. So, the wedding of Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer. If you're going to pick an opera singer, would you pick one from the Commonwealth? You would. Which nails it down to Kiri and Joan. Yep. Was this the gift from New Zealand to the royal couple on their wedding day? $64,000 says yes, sir! <laughs> That's going to be a very nice pair of boots. <laughs> Well played, Alex. Right. You've got 64000 in your pocket. Yep. Let's make it 125000 I'm telling you now, very low chance I don't walk on this next question. OK, well, you might know it. <laughs> Come on, let's go. $64,000, mate. Take a deep breath, mate. $64,000 is chump change compared to a million. You're four answers away from it. $125,000. Let's go, Alex. With over four million students, well, you're one. Okay. With over four million students, the world's largest university by enrolment is in which city? A. Boston. B. Jakarta. C. Beijing. D. New Delhi. Over four million students, the world's largest university by enrolment is in which city? Oh, God, I wish I was. I wish I knew more about these universities. See, Beijing, insanely large population, as with New Delhi. Beijing, obscene amounts of money and infrastructure, so probably a large educational pool there. New Delhi, however, they've been making some big plays. But, told you before, very low chance I don't walk on this question. $64,000 is a lot of meals. OK, will you just um, have a think, OK? Because I'm going to write a check out here for $64,000. But good. you're looking at 125000 
See, Boston, I think Boston doesn't have a massive uni. Those unis have their own towns by now. Jakarta, I wouldn't say they have the population size for it. Beijing has the population and the money. So that makes it the obvious choice. New Delhi has the population and the government's been putting a lot of money into education there. I was there recently. The problem is, that makes too much sense to me. And this is a $64,000 question. So One I'm, right, three wrong. I'm gonna have to take the money and go. Last go. Take the money, it's yours. Yep. Or do you want to have a crack at 125? I'm gonna take the money, Eddie. Congratulations, Alex. <laughs> You've won $64,000. That's super funny. <laughs> that is sensation. All right, come on, you. What were you going with? What were you going with? I'm going to say New Delhi because we make some big education plays. Mm. Had you said New Delhi, I would have said the next question is for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> New Delhi is correct for one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. That's food truck money. That's food truck money, mate. You can buy your new boots. I'm going to buy some good boots. You're going to get a really good <laughs> food truck. You're going to help so many people. That's the plan. You're going to feel great. Mm -hmm. And don't feel disappointed because I think oh, everybody in Australia is just going, Alex Decker, <laughs> you little ripper. Congratulations, I'm pretty mate. Happy. 20 years of age, you've been fantastic. Yeah, the fact that you knew the next <laughs> answer is a good one to put in your pocket as well. Yeah. But you've got the $64,000 to walk out the door. Alex Decker just <laughs> won $64,000. Three more contestants want to have a crack at a million when we return right after this on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? There we are. Back to who wants to be a millionaire? Happy customer, Alex Decker, doing great things. The 20 year old, a 20 year old uh, student, and uh, getting out, feeding all the people, and looking after his sister. That's how it started with one lasagna, and now he's given away about 125,000 uh, feeds throughout the course of this year. It's just been sensational. He's walked away with $64,000. Good luck to our three contestants. Heads down. We want you to win a million dollars. You've got to get the fastest finger first, right? Here it is. Put these poker hands in order from weakest to strongest. A full house, B three of a kind, C high card, D royal flush. Weakest to strongest, full house, three of a kind, high card, royal flush. Time's up. That's it. The person who is the fastest to get the answers in the right order will play for $1 million. And the answer is we need high card. That's the weakest. Then three of a kind. Then full house. And then a royal flush. These people got it right. Mark was the only one. Got you, Mark. Come on, let's play. Many years as a police officer has helped Mark uh, play a bit of cards over the years, I reckon. He's a retired leading senior constable, Mark Tregellis. He's the founder of the Malakuta Recovers, Australia's first community-led disaster recovery platform. In early 2013, Mark launched Crisis Cleanup Australia and more recently was nominated as the 2019 Global Goodwill Ambassador. Mark, tell me about that. Well, we had a, uh, back in about 2012, we had a three-day storm that hit the area and it completely cut us off for three days and I knew that we had to have some sort of system in place. So I asked the RSL for some help and uh, a whole heap of uh, now elderly but uh, very bright veterans uh, helped me out and we launched Malakuta Recovers. It sat there basically not doing anything until the summer bushfires last year which we activated it and we were able to funnel people who wanted donations through to the GoFundMe websites that had been set up for Malakuta. Uh, there was 118 of them and uh, about four months later I think we I tallied them up and we were 18 grand short of a million dollars. Wow, good So it was amazing. You were, of course, you, you and your family were affected by the bushfires. Yes. I think I speak for everybody who was watching during that time how our hearts broke for you and the fact it could do nothing for you. You're left basically on your own to fend for yourselves and the boats came in and thankfully you're here tonight, mate. So let's win some money. You ready to go? Yes. Mark Tregellis, 
15 questions. The safe levels are at $1,032,000 all the way to a $1 million, as I've said. Three lifelines. Ask the host. Switch. 50-50. The lifelines have been pretty valuable tonight so far. There's no time limit, so take your time. Leave any time, as we just saw. $64,000 out the door is a pretty good thing. So let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> All right, good luck, Mark. Question one's for 100 bucks. A significant mess is commonly known as which of these? A, cat's brunch. B, dog's breakfast. C, frog's buffet. D, a lamb's roast. Eddie, I'd like you to lock in B, please, a dog's breakfast. All over the place like a dog's breakfast, correct, for $100. $200. In the acronym ASAP, what does the P typically stand for? A, pending. B, planned. C, please. D, possible. Lock in, please. D, possible. As soon as possible. Correct for $200. $300. $300. Which of these is the name of a common style of earring? A, stud. B, brace. C, beam. D, joist. Well, having a 13-year-old daughter who has come up to me asking about earrings... Can I get some earrings, Dad? Can I get some earrings? Yes. Ask your mother. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to lock in uh, stud A. Thank stud you. Stud is in and correct for $300. <laughs> Simple style of earrings that are small enough to sit on the earlobe for $500. A popular brand of Cadbury box chocolates is called what? A. Carnations. B. Daisies. C. Roses. D. Lilies. Surely you've uh, bought some of these along the journey for Catherine, your beautiful wife of 20 years. I, I have indeed. And yes, I think we'll lock in C. Cadbury Roses. Lock in C. Cadbury Roses is correct for $500. <laughs> First one on sale in Australia, the assortment of Cadbury Roses back in 1948. $1,000 first safe level. Get this, you go home with a grand. Which of these parts of the human body only forms into bone after birth? A. Femur. B. Tibia. C. Ulna. D. Patella. I would have to say the patella or the kneecap. D. Lock in D, the Lock patella. Lock in D, yes. Lock in D is correct for $1,000. Well played. <laughs> <laughs> well played, buddy. That's it, Mark. All those old coppers who are waiting for you to fall over so they can drive you mad tomorrow, you've got them covered now. You've got $1,000. Well played, Mark. $2,000. Let's double it up. OK. The world's largest hydroelectric facility, the Three Gorges Dam, is in which country? A, Canada. B, China. C, Brazil. D, Norway. I seem to remember watching an old documentary on uh, the Yangtze River in China. Out of that, I'm going to lock in B, China, for the Three Gorges Dam. Locked in. You think big, you think China these days, don't you? Three Gorges Dam sense Chinese. It's correct for $2,000. <laughs> Spanning the Yangtze River, you watched the right documentary that night. Yes. In Hubei province, the facility generates almost a quarter of the world's hydroelectric power. Let's go for 4,000. Of Australia's six states and two territories, how many do not observe daylight saving time? A, one. B, two. C, three. D, four. Okay, so um, so I think I'm going to have to use one of the lifelines. Okay, Thank you, you can ask me. You can get rid of it, or have a fifty-fifty. Okay, so I think on that one, I'd like to ask you, Eddie. Mm, okay, well, I'm, 
I think I'm not going to be much more help than you are to yourself, Mark. But here's what I think, OK? Well, well let's go through the ones we know. Yep. Uh, so we know Victoria's in. We know New South Wales is in. We know ACT is in. Yep. We know that South Australia is in. OK, let's work it through. WA's in. They were out for a while, weren't they? I know Queen, Queensland's out. So we Queensland's know out. One. So we've got one. There's one. So it's Northern Territory or WA. Yeah, WA is still four hours behind. It's big enough that they would... Are they four hours behind or three hours behind? Four hours, I thought. I think they're three, so does that mean they don't go in? WA, are they, they, are they daylight saving or not? So we know Queensland doesn't. There's one. Yep. So it's one, two or three, we're thinking, and yep. possibly one on two. So that's where I'm at. Yep. So one or two. One or two. Final answer there. I might actually use another lifeline. Okay, I'll what do you want to use? I'll use 50 50. Okay, let's get rid of two incorrect answers. Alright. Well, that's blown us up. Sort of. I'll have to lock in uh, C for three. Lock it in. Correct for $4,000. Got that. Got that. Got 50 50 was the winner for us. Let's take a break, take a deep breath. $8,000 next up on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> Welcome back, Mark Tregellis. <laughs> we got there, mate. We got we there. We did. We got there. Doesn't matter how you get there, as long as you get there. You've got four grand in your pocket now. A thousand guaranteed, eight thousand coming. You've still got a switch. Let's play for eight grand. Which English Premier League soccer team uses the song "You'll Never Walk Alone" as its club anthem? A. Manchester United. B. Liverpool. C. Arsenal. D. Chelsea. <sighs> Think about this song. You'll never walk alone. Look, I'm. I'm going to use. I'm going to ask to use my my third. You going to get rid of it? Yes, okay. I'm going to get rid of it. Uh, Jerry Marsden, of course, sang this song and passed away only a fortnight ago from Jerry and the Pacemakers. What are we going to lock in? Manchester United. All right. Well, you would have been out the door. Oof. Right? You would have been walking alone out the door. Uh, Jerry Marsden, of course, of Jerry and the Pacemakers, whose other great song was "Ferry Across the Mersey." Liverpool. <sighs> Liverpool. In the cop. The cop at uh, Liverpool. OK, let's get rid of it. At Anfield, their famous home ground where you never walk alone. They had, had 97, 98,000 at the MCG a few years back singing it as well when Liverpool played in Melbourne against Melbourne Victories. An amazing night at the MCG. Right, we're moving on to $8,000. No life launch on your own, mate. Yep. Good luck. Harvested for food. What type of creature is a sprat? A bird. B fish. C insect, D crustacean. Well, birds aren't really harvested for food. Fish is harvested for food. Crustaceans are used for food. Insects aren't really harvested for food. So it would be either a, a fish or a crustacean. Or $4,000. Uh, a fish sprats or a crustacean sprats. What type of creature is a sprat? So I think for this one, I am going to have to lock in D, crustacean. Locked in. Fish. Oh, yeah, you're on the fish all the way. You're fishing all the, the fish way. All the way. I can't believe you locked it in then. I thought you were just there. You're going to go, right, it's not bird, I'll go fish. Doesn't matter. Hey, you've won Doesn't a $1,000, Mark. Thank you, Eddie. Congratulations, mate. Well played and great work on everything you're doing as a former police officer, but these days with Malacuta Recovers and looking after all the people up there, not only with the COVID, but recovering from the horror of the uh, bushfires. Good on you, mate. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you part. very much. Thanks, mate. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Good on you. Good on you. Right, we've got two players left. You ready to go, gang? Are we going? Sure. All right. One of you might, well, one of you will get up, one of you may not. So this is a big one, okay? This might be the last go to get a chance to win $1 million. Heads down, here's the question. 
list these actors in order that they played James Bond from earliest to most recent. A. Roger Moore, B. Daniel Craig, C. Pierce Brosnan, D. Timothy Dalton. Roger Moore, Daniel Craig, Pierce Brosnan, Timothy Dalton. Time's up, and the person who's the fastest gets to have a crack at one million dollars. Here's the answer. We had Roger Moore first of all, then we had Timothy Dalton, then Pierce Brosnan, then Daniel Craig, of course the current James Bond. These people got it right out of our two contestants. Kirby was the fastest and the only one who got it right. So, Kirby, let's go. Dr. Kirby White is 35 years of age, has produced over 6,000 gowns, supplying more than 750 regional clinics with these essential garments and items. Well done, Kirby. She's also built up a stockpile of surplus gowns, which are now ready to go to other clinics when needed, and has been named Victoria's recipient, Local Hero 2021, and has gone above and beyond for her community. Well done, Dr. Kirby White. So you're a GP from Bendigo up in the goldfields of Victoria. Tell me, uh, we, we heard early on about no masks and no gowns and the worldwide shortage. Obviously, that's what got you fired up, was it? Oh, look, Eddie, it was a very difficult time for general practitioners being on the front line at the beginning of COVID. We were getting lots of masks and gloves, but we really didn't have any gowns. Yeah. We couldn't source them anywhere internationally. So how did you fix it up? What did you do next? My business partner and I came up with an idea to make our gowns, make them reusable so we could professionally wash the gowns and have them ready for the next day. And we realised quite quickly that that was our only solution and we had to go with it. So we started sewing. And started making gowns. And away you went. Yeah. Fantastic. In, in the end, how many did you make all up? We've got over 6,000 gowns wow. now. And we've covered all rural and regional GP clinics in Victoria. Yeah. And we've sent them across, across Australia. Good on you, Kirby. Let's go. Dr. Kirby White, 15 <laughs> questions as you've picked up by now. First save level's $1,000. That's a nice one to get to. 32000 is the second, all the way up to $1 million. Three lifelines. Ask the host, switch 50-50. No time limit required. You can take as long as you like and leave any time with your current winnings. Are you ready to go? Sure Are you am. ready to play? Who wants to be a millionaire? Let's go. Here we go for $100. Which of these words is both the name of a card game and a structure over a river? A. Bridge. B. Rummy. C. Yuka. D. Go Fish. I would have to say bridge, Eddie. Lock in A. Lock in A for $100, correct. $200. Which of these is a commonly used informal term for a wage increase? A, lift. B, hoist. C, raise. D, splurge. I think everybody wants a raise, Eddie. I'd lock in C. Lock in C, raise. Correct for $200. $300. To trust an emotional instinct is to follow a what feeling? A gut, B kidney, C lung, D spleen. Come on, Dr. Kirby. <laughs> Which one of it? I don't want a spleen feeling, that's for sure. <laughs> I definitely want a, a gut feeling. I'm locking in A. Locking gut, correct, for $300. Well done. <laughs> $500. Named after a British newspaper is the font What New Roman? A. Courier. B. Mail. C. Times. D. Star. It's my favourite uh, font and it's Times New Roman. Lock in C. Lock in the Times. Correct for $500. Well played. <laughs> Named after the British newspaper, The Times. Here we go for $1,000. Good luck. First safe one. What is the correct spelling for the woolen coat of a sheep? A. Fleece. B. Fleece. C. Fleece. D. Fleece. Eddie, I'm renowned to be the world's worst speller. And you're a doctor, so you can't even read your... That's right. No anyway. one reads my writing, so it doesn't actually matter. My... Go on, take it easy here, Kirby. Oh, Come on. Gee. Fleece, 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 fleece. Which one? My first instinct is to go with B. There we go. Yeah, look, Eddie. 
I think I'll go B. Lock in B fleece. We'll lock in B fleece. Correct for a thousand dollars. We're going to take a break. We'll come back. We are ten questions away from one million dollars. Five more for thirty-two thousand dollars. Let's do it with Dr. Kirby right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Dr. Kirby White is uh, ready to go. She's got $1,000 in her pocket. Kirby, uh, it's all upside from here. Uh, Donna Stoltenberg was with us. Uh, Donna, you're probably not going to make it up. This is our last segment of the show. But uh, tell us a little bit about all these things that you've been able to set up in recent times. Yeah, so I started the National Homeless Collective about nearly six years ago and it started off as one small charity just collecting blankets and sleeping bags for people. We soon saw a whole host of other problems out there so we started up these uh, five other sub-charities under that and they're now spread pretty much right across Australia. Yeah, the Victorian State recipient of the Australian of the Year Award in 2021. Congratulations yep. for Thank that. You. Had you got up, I would have backed it in that you would have got the first five right. So I'm going to give you $1,000 to <laughs> oh, take thank home. You so okay? much. Donna Stolzenberg has just been a wonderful person, particularly over the last 12 months, but right throughout her life, and a proud Indigenous woman as well. So, Donna, thank you for everything you do in the community. Thank you, Eddie. You're fantastic. <laughs> well done, Donna. All right, Kirby, let's go. All Which of these is an Italian dish of crumbed and fried rice balls? A. Arancini. B. Biscotti. C. Salt and Bocca. D. Prosciutto. Or Bruschetta. <laughs> I think Arancini I resembles some type of rice ball. I want to lock in A. Lock it in. <laughs> Correct for $2,000. Stuff with cheese and savoury yeah. fillings. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. The Arancini balls. Right, $4,000. Three lifelines in hand. Come on, Kirby. The Elantra is a model of which vehicle brand? A, Honda, B, Kia, C, Hyundai, D, Nissan. My husband's very good on with cars. I am terrible. I don't think it's a Nissan. I don't think it's a Kia. I'm thinking A or C, Hyundai Elantra or Honda Elantra? Sounds like an old car. I'm leaning more to Hyundai, Elantra. I think I might need a lifeline, Eddie. All right, you have got three to choose. You can get rid of this question altogether. You can ask me, or mm -hmm. you can have a 50-50 on this one. The Elantra. Oh. Model of which vehicle brand? I think I'll go the 50-50, please, Eddie. OK, let's get rid of two incorrect answers. Just before we do it, what are you tossing up between? I'm tossing up between Honda or Hyundai. OK, let's get rid of two. Ah, oh, that's better. Bang. <laughs> I have a Nissan, and I, I don't ever recall seeing an Elantra in the Nissan book, so I'd like to lock in C, Eddie. Lock it in. Correct for $4,000. <laughs> well played. <laughs> Originally uh, sold as the Lantra in Australia when it launched in 1990. Let's go for $8,000, Kirby. Playing beautifully. Two lifelines. Which of these islands is not part of the Furno group of islands in Bass Strait? A. Clark. B. Flinders. C. Cape Barron. D. Lord Howe. Lord Howe Island is off the east coast of Australia. Three of them Party. are in the Furno group in Bass Strait and one's not. Bass Strait. Which not? It's Lord Howe. Lock it in. Lock in D. In. Correct. $8,000. Oh. That's it. You're 100% right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Lord Howe Island is in the Pacific Ocean, as you said, approximately 600 kilometres off the coast mm -hmm. of New South Wales. A magnificent place it is too. This for 16000 <gasps> Which of these is not the name of a team in Australia's NRL? A. Sharks. B. Eels. C. Sea Eagles. D. Stingrays. NRL. I have to admit, I'm terrible at sport, Eddie. 
But I know someone who's good at sport, <laughs> and I believe that person is you. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah, OK. <laughs> I'd really like to reach out for a lifeline. All right. <laughs> OK, you can ask the host, I gather, here. Oh, I'm definitely asking the all host. Right, let's ask the host. Here's what I think, all right? I'm saying A, B, C, R. NRL, so let's have a look at this again. Which of these is not the name of a team in the NRL? It's the Stingrays. Lock it That's in, Eddie. Lock, lock in, D. Stingrays. Please. Locked in, correct, for 16. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Not a bad name for a team, by the way. It's the Stingrays. <laughs> All right, next one. Guaranteed 32,000. <gasps> Come on, Kirby. You can take the 16 grand. Chado. Is the name given to a traditional Japanese what? A tea ceremony. B martial art. C costume. D dance. Chado. I've never heard of the word chado. Um, it would be a guess. So I think I'll use another lifeline, please, Eddie. OK, let's get we'll rid of this one. We'll switch it out. Let's switch it out. All right, out it goes. What would you have gone for? I was probably leaning towards A, a tea ceremony. It's a tea ceremony. <sighs> uh, anyway, get rid of it. We've got to get to 32,000. Come on, let's, yep. let's get a better one. You're on your own from here. OK. Next question. Here it comes. For $32,000, which of these words best describes someone who has an understanding or awareness of information? A, nescient. B, equivocal. C, cognizant. D, blasé. Someone who has an understanding or awareness of information. I think I've heard about this on movies. I think it's a cognizant, but I'm not 100%. <laughs> oh, you're only here once, Eddie. Lock in C. Lock in C? Medical term? Not at all. <laughs> not that I've heard of in the last eight years. OK. <laughs> cognizant? Awareness, understanding, oh, maybe, yeah. The suspense. Correct for thirty-two thousand. <laughs> All right, Kirby. This is the sixty-four thousand yes. dollar question. Which of these countries has the only remaining monarchy in North Africa? A. Algeria. B. Morocco. C. Tunisia. D. Egypt. <sighs> Only it's remaining fine. monarchy in North Africa. I'm leaning towards Morocco. Lock in Morocco. B. Lock in. Please, Eddie. Why Morocco? I like the word. I just like it. <laughs> I just like the word. I actually... <laughs> is this how you get a medical degree in these days, isn't it? Persistence. Yeah. <laughs> Kirby White, Dr Kirby White, you've just won $64,000! <laughs> Right, took you 10 questions to get the 32. Now you can lose 32,000. You can take the 64 and run. Let's have a look at 125,000. Okay. Come on. I want a good one. All right. <laughs> American born businessman David J. Davis owned which of these famous racehorses? A. Seabiscuit. B. Maccabi Diva. C. Farlap. D. Black Caviar. <laughs> David J. Davis. David J. Davis. American, An American born businessman, David J. Davis. Eddie, I think the odds are against me on this one. I think I'll take the money. All right, last one. Last one. Um, oh, I don't think it's Sea Biscuit. <laughs> I really am leaning towards Black Caviar, but that's. Just like Morocco, I like the name. I'm not sure. I have no idea. Do you like 64,000? I do like 64,000. Just have a look at it. Just have a look. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And if you want to tear it up, you do the same. Take the money. I think it feels too good. I'm taking the money. You've won $64,000. <laughs> <laughs> Woo!
There's the hooter, there's the final sire, an American-born businessman, David yeah. J. Davis. Now, Seabiscus was an American horse. Mike okay. Harvey Davis said uh, won three. You were going to go black caviar, weren't you? Yeah. yeah, you're all in black caviar. I was. Yeah. Right from the beginning. Yeah, you were. Yeah. No. Oh. No, no. <laughs> David J. Davis was the owner of the New Zealand-born, but we claimed it, Farlap. Farlap. Farlap's owner, oh. David J. Davis. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, famously, of course, if you've seen the movie. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go, David J. Davis. So that is Good. the best decision you've ever made. It has been. You <laughs> used everything. You used all your luck. You used all your guile, you used all your intelligence, and you used all your lifelines. And as a result of that, Dr. Kirby White, you've won $64,000. You. How about that? <laughs> Congratulations, Kirby. Great stuff. $64,000. The grand total of tonight, $139,000, if you don't mind. See you next time on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire for the Celebrity Special. Good night, everyone.